Hello everyone and welcome to Ocean Cadence. In today's video, we will be talking about an important component or element that is used on board which is known as the differential pressure transmitter. Now, before we begin about the working of the differential pressure transmitter, we need to understand what exactly is the need for this particular device. So, a differential pressure transmitter is used at places where there can be a pressure differential that exists. So, as the name itself implies, for the pressure differential to exist, there would definitely be a high pressure side and a low pressure side or two sides of flow and two sides of pressure segregated by a particular element. Now, depending upon the differential of the pressure of these two sides, which I would regard as the high and the low pressure side in a very generic sense, the differential pressure transmitter in a nutshell gauges it then converts it into an electrical signal and then finally it sends it as an electrical signal to a final display device where it is displayed in a numeric or an analog or whatever fashion we want it to for the user to interpret things such as level pressure or difference in pressure or hydraulic pressure status etc. Now, after telling this much, we can very easily understand where such an equipment would be useful on board. So, wherever there is a filter that exists and we need to monitor its status, it can be easily monitored with the help of a differential pressure transmitter to gauge the differential of the pressure as well as the status of the flow. Similarly, another very important application of a DP transmitter or what is sometimes also regarded as a DP cell on board is the boiler. In the boiler, we use it between the water and the steam side to check the level of the water drum and thus get an accurate operation and the reading of when the feed water pump has to cut in and cut off and also for the remote sensing and monitoring of the water level within the drum. So now that we know about the basic idea behind the differential pressure transmitter, now let us look at the basic structure of the differential pressure transmitter. So first of all, as I said that it works on the principle of a differential between the pressure existing. So there would obviously be two sides. One would be the HP and the other LP side or basically two sides of a flow from where one particular fluid will be exerting pressure and on the other side the other fluid will be exerting pressure. Now it is also important to understand that for a differential pressure transmitter, sensing capabilities depend upon how clean and clear the fluid is. Otherwise, it would not allow for the movement of its other elements, which I'll be explaining later. So, it is very important to maintain the DP transmitter in a clean status and that is why we also have certain routines for its cleaning on board. So, as we can see here, the primary element would be the element in which there would be the first impact of the pressure differential. That is, let us suppose if there is a fluid on one side and if there is a fluid on another side and the primary element is nothing but a diaphragm. So, if the fluid on the left side exerts more pressure than that on the right side, it would create a displacement of the diaphragm towards the right side and that is the kind of reaction that we are looking forward. Now, to further increase the level of this, imagine that instead of the diaphragm, it is now the diaphragm but also in the form of a capacitance plate. So, if there are two plates existing over here, then what would happen is the moment extra pressure is exerted on one of the plates, it would get displaced towards the other side and what it would do is that it would increase the distance between the capacitance plates. So now what that would do is it would increase the or decrease the current that is flowing through the circuit which is connected to it. So now to understand how this is being converted further, let us look ahead. Now the other element is the secondary element next in line. This secondary element is the one that is doing the sensing part of the circuit. So basically as I said that if we were to consider the diaphragms as plates of capacitance and now there is a displacement that has happened. So this change in the flow of the current has to be or change in the capacitance has to be sensed by the sensing element and then transmitted further. So that is done by the secondary element and then it is sent to an electronic housing. In the electronic housing, we can see that there would be current applied across the circuit and what it would mean is 
that as the capacitance of the circuit changes so would proportionally the amount of current that is flowing through the circuit and that means if our equipment is calibrated that is the dp transmitter is calibrated to display a certain reading with this proportional change in the current that is flowing across it what we as somebody standing outside would understand is that there is a change in the parameter that we are trying to observe so for example if on one side of the dp transmitter flow side i have water and on the other side i have steam and let us say now the steam is exerting more pressure so basically what i want to understand here is that the steam is more and also in high pressure and in high quantity state that means the water level has gone down so when the steam exerts more pressure it would push the diaphragm in the left hand side and what it would necessarily mean is that the change in capacitance would also create a change in the flow of the current across the circuit that is the final element on the display side and that would translate necessarily into a change in the reading that we can observe on our meters or our display boards that we have in the engine room or in the local station or wherever we want to install it over here in this diagram we can also see that in a balanced state particularly the capacitive sensor when there is no deflection between the high and the low side the diaphragm would be in a zero position and that means there would be no current outflow and that would be the equilibrium state and this is the state at which we usually calibrate the dp transmitter if we are manually calibrating it let's say so a lot of times you would come across a situation on board where you have to calibrate the dp transmitter when you are working on a boiler as a periodic routine or sometimes if it is malfunctioning also so the equilibrium state at which the calibration is done is the state where the diaphragm if it is a capacitance type that is so would be when the diaphragm is at its zero position and it means basically both sides are exerting equal pressure and then it would be showing zero calibration reading on the final output meter and again as i have emphasized earlier in the video any deflection between the high and the low side depending upon the change of the fluid pressure that is exerted would create a change in the capacitance values with because of the diffraction in the diaphragm and that would be interpreted as a positive or a negative signal output on the output side and thus it would give a different kind of a reading altogether and which would be transmitted as a different value on the final display status and we can get to know the level status of the boiler or wherever let's say if it is a implemented on a filter then we can get to know the flow status across the filter etc it is also very important to understand that the diaphragm in the dp transmitter and again i am talking particularly about the capacitance type because this is the one which is very commonly implemented as it is easily available in the market for a very cheaper price so the diaphragm here should not be damaged at any state that means during the calibration part also for inexperienced hands or any other inexperienced technicians it is not advised to carry out any maintenance on the diaphragm side because if there is even the slightest of damage that occurs on the diaphragm what it would mean is that it would create a disturbance in the equilibrium of the pressure upon which we are highly relying for measuring the output and getting the final calibration and the reading so basically these three elements that is the primary element secondary element and the electronic housing which we can see together would constitute the entire dp transmitter and during the overhaul of the calibration part not much of a disturbance is carried out on the electronic housing as well as the internal part of the primary element it is only the secondary element that is cleaned calibrated with an external source and also the flow side of both ends for the dp transmitter is checked to make sure that everything is in a clear and effective state also it is very important to understand over here that under remote areas let's say for example if you are getting the signal in the engine room or in the remote panel of the operation of the boiler or any other equipment that we are monitoring it is very important to understand that while calibrating the readings between these different places or the different panels or the different displays should be calibrated simultaneously so for example if there is an error due to any electronic malfunction in the equipment it should not be taken as the error in the dp transmitter which is sometimes what we do and we end up in a situation where there are different readings for the same condition 
of pressure within the boiler and uh, we take it as a dp transmitter malfunction where it is not the case again going by this diagram we can very easily understand the state of equilibrium and this particular diagram in case of questions being asked in examination or let's say during the orals also can be highly effective because this is in a nutshell what the surveyor is trying to understand from us because they want to understand the simple functioning not for us to showcase any complicated ideas so i hope that this very brief and precise understanding of the dp transmitter can help you to understand how it actually works where it is implemented and what we are actually achieving by using this particular equipment or piece of machinery and to know more about such elements and to be connected please make sure to subscribe our channel and keep liking and following our content thank you